close enough. This is an instrument that dates back to medieval times. It is the precursor to, um, it's like a bowed lute. It's sort of, it, it's a bit of a dinosaur in that it went extinct and gave birth to the violin and the guitar and a lot of other things. Um, it's used in folk music from all throughout Europe. Um, it's commonly, uh, it survived longest in France. Um, but actually this design is like a, a Northern European uh, style. There's murals from the 10th century that show people playing these from all throughout Europe. Um, so they're a bit of a folk, uh, a folk instrument. There's a wheel in here, which I can take this off. Let's see. Construction's pretty simple. The construction's pretty simple. You have a uh, two drones, and then a, 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 in this case, one melodic string. Um, So for Black Sails, this was my this was my saving grace because I needed something that sounded piratey and yet strange and weird, but also something that would be historically accurate, something that would have existed at that time, something that could have been taken on a boat. And this just kind of opened up that whole project for me. The sound of this became the defining sound of the score, and I used it even to create textures and effects and harmonics and it was great to step away from the piano because I usually intellectualize all my ideas here and with this that that melody the black sails theme I wrote on this thing and I would never have written it the same way uh, if I'd been sitting at a piano look I'm a keyboard player so for me I, I never learned violin I never learned guitar so for me, something with strings, piano is very simple and it's, and, and it's wonderful. You can't play a note out of tune on a piano. But for me, the way it drifts in and out of tune and the way like the melody can get a little, I mean, just for example, if I had written this here. Is that cool? I don't know, maybe, maybe that's cool. This is cool. And I just found it was so expressive and weird and cool. And thankfully, John Steinberg, my showrunner, really clicked with it. And he just goes, what's that? Oh, I love that. And uh, it's just sort of like, we all kind of fell in love with the sound for, for Black Sails. For most people, this sounds so weird. It sounds like a bagpipe that's dying. It, it just doesn't sound like anything you've ever heard before. And that was really exciting to find a way to acknowledge some sea shanties, acknowledge this style of pirate music, but do it in a different way. And similar to, um, I'm gonna connect this to, to Kill a Mockingbird, are you ready? Because here it goes. <laughs> that thing I learned from Elmer about starting with something unusual. You got two seconds to hook them. The sound of the Black Sails main title is this instrument on a day that it was breaking. I actually can't recreate it, it was doing this weird it was doing this weird thing where it's like... It was this drone, but it was like, it was like limping and lopsided and I quickly put the mics up and I recorded it. That's the sound of Black Sails. When the show starts, it's this sound that sounds like nothing else other than a weird hurdy-gurdy. And, and I, you know, I got that from Elmer. I got that you got two seconds to do something unusual, um, do something that will immediately draw them into the world. And I think this sound tells you that you're seeing a story that is out on the high seas, but it's about broken people. It's about sad, dark individuals. This is not a fun swashbuckling adventure. This is like a more realistic, historically accurate political drama about people in this world. So it was a very unusual experience. And now I am 
Uh, I guess I'm a much better hurdy-gurdy player now than I was. <laughs>